A file filter object can be used to mask various file extensions when loading them into a JFrame. When file filters are combined with JFile chooser objects, a browsable dialog can be created that gives the user a convenient way to browse, search for, and select files from their local file system. A JFile chooser object can be used in conjunction with a file filter object to give the user a browsable dialog that provides the ability to browse, search for, and select files of a specified extension from their local file system. In this example in code, I have a package called Game Functions, and there are several helper classes here, and one of them is Pirate Filter. Pirate Filter extends the file filter object from file chooser. Alright, so what does Pirate Filter do? Well, it's going to look for any files with the extension or that end with .pirate, .pirate. Once I have a file filter object, in this case an extension of file filter called Pirate Filter, I can then use a JFile Chooser. So here I'm importing it from Java X Swing JFile Chooser. And let's go down and here I'm instantiating or building a new JFile Chooser object. And when I do this, Notice that I can set the dialog title that pops up. I can set the approve button. In this case, what will it say? It'll say load pirate. I can set the background and the foreground. And most important, I can set the filter, my pirate filter object, with the method set file filter. And then I simply instantiate a new pirate filter as a parameter. Once I do this, I'm then going to call the method show open dialog. And I have to pass on a pointer to my JFrame, my interface. And then after I do that, I'm then going to get the selected file and then load that file. So let's see how that works. All right, so if I load it, notice that this is my dialog. And my button says load pirate in this case, and I'm looking for .pirate files, pirate arena files. So just uh, an example of using a file filter object and a JFile chooser uh, to do things like uh, create browsable dialogs where the user can browse files on their local file system. Have you ever wanted to create hyperlinks in Java the way you can in HTML and JavaScript? Well, it's completely possible by defining your own hyperlink. You can create your own hyperlink objects in Java by extending the JLabel class. We can do this by appending beginning and ending HTML tags to a link name as coded in Java. In the following example, we will accept two arguments. The first is the hyperlink name, and the second is the hyperlink's URL. Here's an example in code. You can see the packages we're importing from. In this case, the abstract windows toolkit, odd event from mouse event and mouse listener, IO, and NUT. Now, we're extending JLabel, and this means we inherit all of its functions and methods and all of its data members as well. We're implementing mouse listener, and again, this is to emulate or simulate the functionality of a hyperlink, where you hold your mouse over it and you can click on it and go to a URL. In the constructor for our homemade hyperlink, we're taking two string arguments. In this case, the first string is going to be the name of the hyperlink, or what would be displayed. The second string is going to be the actual URL, or what it would go to when it gets clicked on. Now, we're going to use this pointer and set text, and we're going to append some HTML tags to the descriptive string. When we do that, instead of a try block, we're going to go ahead and instantiate a new URI object. When we do this, because it's in a try block, we have to catch a URI syntax exception right here. And if something goes wrong, we'll simply print the stack trace. Then we're going to go call the initialize method. Well, what does that do? In the initialize method, if you take a look at it, it's simply going to start everything out, or every hyperlink out, as red. The foreground color would be red. We'll set the font to Comic Sans MS, and then opacity will be false, and then the tooltip text, in this case, will simply be whatever the hyperlink is, converted to a string. And we're going to add mouse listener to it, so that when we click on it, we can trigger a mouse clicked event. So then that brings us to our event handler. In our event handler method, what's going to happen? Well, if e get click count is greater than zero, in this case, you know, if we click the hyperlink successfully, um, if desktop is supported, then we're going to get the desktop and we're going to try this. We're going to browse to the URL with the web browser.
And if something goes wrong from that try block, we're going to catch it right here and print a stack trace. And then we have other methods here that we have to implement because up here we implemented mouse listener. Well, these functions are abstract. And even if we didn't use them, we still have to include them. So mouse entered, mouse exited, mouse pressed, and mouse released. And if you look at it, we're just simply getting the predefined cursor and changing the color in this example. So if I click on the link and I've already visited the link, this would sort of give us the, the simulation or the emulation of a V-link or a visited link in HTML by changing it from red to blue. So just the example code for a homemade hyperlink. And here's what it looks like. In this case, let me go ahead and load the splash screen. And we'll spawn the JFrame. And then if I click on the menu item up here, here is my homemade hyperlink. And if I click on it, it'll simply open my web browser and take me to networkingprogramming.com. Alternatively, looking at another project that's using the same homemade hyperlink, let's go here to Conspiracy29. Conspiracy, Conspiracy29. And let's load that interface. Just using the same homemade hyperlink object. Notice we have different uh, JFrame menus here. So if I look at Denver International Airport clues, here's a bunch of hyperlinks. And I can click on them and it'll simply open my web browser to them. And I can go browse those hyperlink objects. Mm -hmm.